Hi guys, thanks for watching my channel. I'm Caroline and today I wanted to share with you guys what it's like to sell on ThreadUp. This video is not sponsored, so I can share with you the good, the bad, the ugly, all the ins and outs, the pros and cons. If you're interested in third party selling and ways you can make your fashion and closet more sustainable, please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below. So the way ThreadUp works for sellers is you order a selling kit and that can either look like a plastic bag that they send to you or you can get an immediate label emailed to you and you can print that out right away. That is the option that I recommend. Both of them are free. You don't have to pay for shipping to send in clothes to, you know, thread up, which is great. But I would recommend going with the label, you know, print yourself option. One, it's faster because you don't have to wait for the bag to get to you. Two, you don't have to worry about the plastic bag. So the very first time I sold on ThreadUp, I requested a bag to see what it was like, and they send a giant bag. It's huge, and it can fit a lot of clothes, but I was really worried about sending in things like shoes. I tried to make sure that the shoes were in between the piles of clothes, and it was really big and heavy when I was done packing the bag. ThreadUp does have a limit of, I believe it's 30 pounds. I'll confirm on the screen here. Whatever that says is their weight limit of the time of filming and editing. It's a pretty substantial amount, but the nice thing is if you get the printout label, you can slap it on a cardboard box from you know all your Amazon purchases. I know you have a bunch and you can really maximize and package that stuff well without worrying that your sales are gonna somehow get lost in the mail. Big thing about ThreadUp is trying to reduce fashion waste. Fashion has a big impact on our earth because of overproduction. To try to eliminate some of that demand for new clothes all the time, they're giving clothing a second life. A lot of times people take things out of their closet, not necessarily because it's broken or in bad shape or stained. A lot of times people just have their styles change or outgrow things or just don't fit things anymore and that's okay, but a lot of times that clothing is still great and can go to a home, um, maybe can go to someone who would appreciate that style way more. So ThreadUp tries to help connect those people. ThreadUp is great for people who just don't have the time of day to use third-party sites like Poshmark or Mercari. The thing about Poshmark is sometimes it's hard to move inventory. So if you want to just get stuff out of the house, ThreadUp is the way to go. Again, you just lump everything in a box and ship it out to them. They do all the work. It's very hands off. They don't accept everything. While they say they accept every brand, they don't accept a list of certain exotic textiles and animal skins, and they don't accept men's clothing. On sites like Poshmark and eBay, you can sell things like home goods and, and men's clothing. That is a downside of that because I know my fiance Anthony has just a so many clothes that he would love to just pack in a bag and send off. ThreadUp also only gives you a very small percentage because they're doing all the work. They're taking your clothing, they're sorting their, your clothing, you're, they're photographing your clothing, and they're selling their, your clothing. And it's a tiered system. I'll try to give the information on screen if I can find it on the ThreadUp website. The problem with that is that it, you know, it, it could change and it's very convoluted. It's not always straight up. Poshmark, you make 80% of whatever price you set. So that is a very stark difference between the two platforms. And on ThreadUp, they set a time limit by when the product can sell. Usually it's anywhere from, you know, 30 to 90 days. It depends on whether the brand is considered premium. On Poshmark, you can put something and it can stay on Poshmark forever. The other downside of ThreadUp selling is that it can take forever. So when the pandemic hit, they kind of put huge delays on their processing time. When you send something in, they usually quote you at anywhere, you know, from four to 10 weeks. At one point, they paused accepting boxes altogether because they were getting so much stuff. I imagine because everyone was at home and cleaning out their closets. And because ThreadUp puts a limit on how long things can stay on their site, when I'm sending in ThreadUp boxes, I try to think of them in seasonal fashion. So if I know, you know, 10 weeks from now, it's gonna be summer, I'm gonna put 
you know, summer related things in my boxes with the hopes that it's going to sell quickly because people, you know, during summer, maybe people are looking for summer clothes. That's the way I think of thread up Poshmark. I will just throw on whatever I have because it doesn't matter. There's no seasonality. There's no limits in that regard. Something that I find really strange about the thread up website is that it's really hard to determine what happens to the clothing that they either don't accept and don't post on their website or items that they post on the website but don't end up selling in the time limit that they set for the item. What I ended up discovering and what I hope is the most accurate information is that they accept on average about 40% of what you send in. So if you send in 100 pieces, they'll on average accept 40 of those pieces. I've lucked out. They have tended to accept about 70% of what I've been sending in, but then it makes me wonder what happens to that 30%. ThreadUp has something called rescue boxes. Apparently, rescue boxes only make up about 5% of what they don't sell or accept, but they do sell these rescue boxes. They don't give you a cut of the rescue box. These are items that they deem not trendy enough or maybe it's damaged, just something that they don't think that they can sell in the time frame that they set for these you know, different brands, they put in the rescue box. And you can buy like bulk t-shirts. Anything that doesn't end up being sold on their site or put in their rescue boxes and sold that way, they apparently send to vetted textile recyclers. They don't send them to charities, apparently because charities are just inundated with so many clothing donations that they don't need clothing. Um, so that's apparently the cycle that happens in a vetted textile recycler, presumably recycles the textiles to be used you know, to, in the creation of new clothes. So it is, it's a cycle and it's trying to prevent things from ending up in the landfill. As far as what my experience has been, again, like I said, they, I've sent in boxes and they've accepted a large part of what I've sent in on average about 70%, which is higher than their regular average. And I haven't sold everything that they've accepted and posted and you know photographed and put on their site. The very first box that I sent in, they accepted about 26 pieces, but only 11 of those pieces sold. The brands that sold were J. Crew Factory, Maidwell, Forever 21, Aqua, the Bloomingdale's brand. Um, I actually sold a Mossimo piece, but my exhilaration pieces, which are also kind of in that Target family, didn't do well. None of the exhilaration pieces I've ever sent in have ever sold. Not a lot of the limited edition kind of seasonal collections seemed to do very well on the site um, as far as the pieces that they chose from my closet and what I saw. They, I did sell, you know, one Victoria Beckham Target piece, but that was one of several, you know, collection type pieces that I submitted. And those types of pieces can do very well on a Poshmark. They are very niche. People are specifically searching for those. So those are the kind of pieces that you might want to stick with a, a platform that you have more control over. Threadup also has something called return assurance. And this is good if you're concerned about what happens to it down the line. If you're worried about the lack of transparency, that opacity in their system and them sending it to these, you know, vetted textilers, you can ask for return assurance. You pay them $11 and they will ship all, all your unaccepted stuff back to you. You know, if you have any doubts about pieces at all, 100% use their return assurance. Not to mention, again, if you have questions about the lack of trans, uh, the lack of transparency of, you know, where do these pieces go? Why do they put them in rescue boxes but don't pay me for them? Why are they sending sending them to textilers instead of to a charity? Use that eleven dollar return assurance and you know get the pieces back and donate them to a local you know shelter or donate them to someone in your family who might use them. And that way you know that they are going through at least another, you know, round of wear potentially instead of going straight to a textile recycler. Overall, I will continue using ThreadUp. 
it's really great for clearing large batches of clothing out of the house. It's really great for being hands off quick and easy. It is not that great for making money, but you can cash out for um, kind of like gift credit at different retailers and sometimes you'll get a boost. So if you made, let's say $20 on the box that you sent in, you can get a boost and they'll give you that $20 plus a 15%, you know, portion of that in credit for one of their partnering stores. So that is cool. If there are pieces that I want more control over, I want to make more of my money back, I will put them on Poshmark to make sure that I have the most control. If you made it this far in the video, please leave the word hanger in the comments below so I know that you made it to the end. If you're thinking about selling on sites like Threadup or Poshmark, I hope that this was helpful for you. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments and I'll try to get to them. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.